Good morning, grandkids. This is a work in progress. And this is chapter 16. We're starting on chapter 25. Well, I mean, this is episode 16. And we're starting on chapter 25. Um, Gabriella has sent me on a mission for her. So we are starting out, and let's see where we are going. I left the city by carriage on my way to Morthal. From there, I would make my way on foot to Dragon's Bridge by road, not by swamp. Once I crossed the bridge into town, I wandered around, checking the layout. How many guards were out? Where the security were stationed? I also wanted to find out where the Pentius Oculatus headquarters was located. The strategy I formed in my head was to walk past anyone outside as though I had business there, saying good morning and entering. Then stop someone and ask where a fictitious person might be located and proceed on down the hallway always being pleasant and as though I was there on business. I figured that with so much security around, any kind of sneaky sneaky would probably wind up getting me beheaded. My strategy worked like a charm. Two incidents had me almost chuckling and not thinking too much of their so-called security. I had one man ask me about my armor. Thank goodness I had removed my cowl and mask. I gave him a story about belonging to a citizen security patrol in my hometown, and I was here to learn about strategies to take back with me to make things safer there, just in case the emperor came through. Good work, he said and rather nice armor your security has. Then he moved on. I'm such a good liar. I waited, stooped down by the side of the desk. Oh, wait. Sorry, I didn't turn over my page. My second laughable encounter was with a young officer who stopped me and asked if he could direct me somewhere. To him, I said with a big smile, why, yes, you can. I'm looking for Commander Mario's office, Mario's office. He actually pointed me down the hallway saying, it's the door down there on the left. I don't believe he's in right now though. There's a bench right there outside his office where you can sit and wait for him, if you wish. I thanked him kindly and said, oh, I do wish. I sauntered on down the hall to the door with the commander's name on it. I looked around to make sure that the officer was gone, picked the lock, and breezed inside. This was all being too stupidly easy so far, but thank all the gods divine. Now, if I can find that travel schedule easily, I, of course, started with his desk. No schedule on top, neither in any of the drawers. Next, I checked a bookcase with no results. I found a safe against the wall, and of course, I picked the lock and removed money and jewelry, which was waiting for me inside. I turned around and noticed some kind of a carrying case sitting against the side of the desk. It was double locked, and when I got it open, there was the travel schedule. I took it out, folded it, and stuck it inside my armor. I was starting to leave when I heard voices in the hallway. I froze. Oh no, I thought. I knew this had... (laughs) Had all been too easy. I waited stooped down by the side of the desk. I had no strategy for what I'd do if someone walked in. 
I heard a door being unlocked nearby, and the voices moved away as they went into some other room and shut the door. I breathed a sigh of relief and hurried over to the door and peeked out. I slipped out, but no sooner than I had shut the door behind me than I saw the same young officer turn the corner at the far end of the hall and start my way. I stood there a second, stretching my arms a bit and trying to look like I had just got up off the bench, <laughs> then started walking down the hall toward him. As we met, he said, did you get to speak with the commander? I said, no, he hasn't returned yet, and I have some other business to attend to. I'll be coming back a little later, but thank you for your help. He said, that's quite all right, sir, and we each moved on. Outside, I could breathe easy once more. All in all, that little mission went exact, exceedingly well. Now I needed to get out of sight and study the schedule and plan my next strategy. On the road out front was a group of men milling around and I saw, by the descriptions Astrid had given me, Commander Merrow with his son Gaius and several of the Pentius Oculatus. Near them were a few saddled horses and I watched as Gaius and a couple of the others saddled up and took off on one of the roads. I walked down the road in the opposite direction. I walked off into the woods, found a stump and sat down. After looking over the schedule, I could see that they first were headed to Markarth, then to Solitude. The part that interested me the most was what it said about Windhelm. When Gaius goes there, he will stay overnight in the barracks. I thought killing him in there sounded even better than out in the streets. If I could slip into the barracks, find the room they were sleeping in, wait until they were all asleep, kill Gaius quietly, and sneak back out. How hilarious would that be? The guards would wake up, find him murdered right under their sleeping noses. How stupid would they all feel? It was truly laughable. Now if I could just pull it off. Since they were traveling on horseback and would have business to conduct in each city, I knew I could make it all the way to Windhelm before they could ever get there. I would hike up to Solitude, unless I could bum a ride along the road, and there I could hire a carriage to Windhelm. I would have plenty of time to check out the barracks and all escape routes maybe stock up on more invisibility potions, as I was sure I'd need them. Make sure all my weapons were in good working order and get some food and rest. When I got there, I rented a room at the nearest inn, then went out in the town to scout out my plans. I only hoped that everything would go as well as it had been so far and that it would all go down as I planned. The carriage rolled up to the stables in the late evening and I hopped down and crossed the long bridge and entered Windhelm. I strolled around, checking out the city, noticing all the roll of the stones here and there. I wondered about the city's finances. Couldn't they afford to rebuild things or even have it cleaned up. I also realized that the streets were a maze to me and that I'd probably get lost trying to get out. That might cause me a big problem. I found the barracks and did a walk through. The guards didn't like me being in there, not as friendly as at Dragon Bridge. I then stayed mostly in the inn for a few days until I heard the excitement in town about the security and Gaius coming. 
and then was out and about, keeping my eye on Gaius. His last evening there, I saw him heading sorry, heading for the barracks. I followed him and watched him go inside. I drank an invisibility potion and followed him in. I went to their sleeping room, which I had found earlier, with beds lined all along one wall and a few tables and chairs. The beds were all full of sleeping guards, but Gaius was sitting at one of the tables drinking. A perfect opportunity, I thought. But in the middle of the room was a guard who had walked in ahead of me. I wasn't sure what he was going to do. I drank another invisibility potion, then walked in and slipped around a wall to get behind Gaius's chair. The guard went to one of the beds and laid down. I didn't move. Finally, he rolled over facing the farthest wall. When I sure, was sure he was settled down, I took my chance and moved. Just as I was behind Gaius, he got up and stretched and started out of the room. Drats, the perfect opportunity foiled. I was going to follow, but a guard entered the room like he was on patrol. I could feel the effects of my potion wearing off just as he turned away and started back out. I breathed a sigh of relief, drank potions, and left the room. Once I was safely outside again, I looked up and down the street trying to spot Gaius, but he was nowhere in sight. I took some steps down to a lower street and spotted a figure ahead. As I got closer, I saw that it was him and looked around. Not a soul was in this deserted part of the narrow streets. I popped another potion and closed the gap between us. I soundlessly eased up behind him. I reached around him and cut his throat in total silence, except for a faint sigh that escaped his lips. As he dropped to the street, I dropped down and placed the incriminating letter in his clothes. The dead, the deed was done with only a couple of scary moments. And then I scurried out of the city and got the carriage to Fall Creek. Once back home, I rented a room for the night. I wasn't in the mood to return to the sanctuary. I'm sitting here on the side of the bed with my journal. I'm sorting through things in my head and trying to write everything down in a reasonably logical way. Nothing so far had been as dangerous as I thought it might be. Mainly, my thoughts are now centered on the Brotherhood. There's a lot going on there, and a very interesting group of people for me to keep my eye on. So that's the end of my story for today, and uh, I will see you next week with another chapter in The Listener. Bye-bye, grandkids. guys for some reason or other I can't I can't uh, I can't make this cut off why why <laughs>